Well, it's time for another property project that I'm about to take on. It's a house I already own, uh, but for years it's been left pretty much to its own devices. Devices, is that right? Yeah, anyway, um, it's uh, an HMO, right? A, a student let it was, and then a professional let. And this is it. Uh, it's a nice Victorian property. Um, it's fallen into a bit of disrepair, and I've just finally taken the decision that actually I'm going to invest some money in it and maybe um, turn it into something which I can let out uh, at a slightly more professional level. Uh, and uh, all the students have gone, so um, now is the time to really do it. So I'm going to do pretty much what I did previously, um, and I'm going to talk you round. You need to turn the camera around and let's look round what we've got and my thought processes on sorting out this five or six bed HMO. So this is it, uh, really nice. Victorian, um, well, just house really. I suppose it's not the most exciting thing. Is it here? So, what have we got? Uh, okay, so into the front door here, um, flooring, um, very utilitarian. Probably something I'm going to replace now. It was and has been an HMO. Um, people have now left, uh, left in a right old state. Actually, I've seen worse. Um, but so, nice big rooms, lovely features. Look at that. You know me, love my features, woo. Um, when it comes to HMOs, there's lots and lots and lots of things you need to consider. HMO, house of multiple occupation. Um, so that is a house you can have more than one tenancy agreement and more than one family group in it. Uh, and quite rightly, there are lots more rules and regulations when it comes to HMOs, uh, what you can and can't do and some things you have to put in place. Um, a lot of it, quite rightly to do with safety so fire doors automatically closing doors where required a hardwired uh, fire alarm system for sure I mean, you have to have that in, in, in most modern houses now anyway you have to have a, a, a certain number of bathrooms per, per per number of people in the house but actually i'm going to counter out that one by actually having on suites in every room because I think that is what people want these days. So you need a living space with uh, perhaps a certain number of, of uh, uh, fridges and stuff like that. Um, and there are rules and regulations about soundproofing and uh, and all sorts of other stuff that you need to uh, obey by. And also you need to talk to the local authorities just to decide whether or not um, you need to get a license for what you're planning and, and, and you probably do. So it's really good to talk to them, get them involved early on uh, because uh, they are moving more and more to having licensed HMOs, uh, although it may not be required. I think it's good to have some sort of cell phone forced um, scenario there and do things to best practice wherever you can. Uh, so that's the plan, turn it into uh, an HMO, House of Multiple Occupation. Uh, but these days people want it to be nice. Okay, so I'm I'm going to strip it back. I'm going to I'm going to make it as as nice a, a, a place as it could possibly be, and do uh, what what I I really need to do uh, to make it as good as possible. Um, just a few points, and I'll go around again over the the window towards the window there. A bit of a bit of damp going on. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's causing that. Uh, these properties tend to be single skinned uh, because of the age. Um, so I've checked outside, there's nothing untoward there. It's nice original features, the coving. Well, let's explore, we'll go up there in a minute. Uh, and you can see what I'm thinking about HMO here, nice sized rooms. In here, I think they uh, put the uh, ensuite in that corner there. I'm gonna have to move the radiator, but I'll probably put it over there uh, by the window. Uh, I think that would be more sensible. Anyway, so we get uh, an ensuite in here. In here, just go back to this room for a second. I'm thinking about putting an ensuite over there in that corner. There's already a natural uh, recess, so that works for me. Now let's go through here into the kitchen. Now, uh, very classic for these properties. Uh, as you can see, pretty tired, old and dated. Um, I'm definitely going to have some fun in here. Uh, clearly, this is um, uh, the major focal point. Uh, for the people living in the house there isn't really going to be a living room so this kitchen is going to be your sort of your social space so i'm thinking about changing this around that is where, kind of where the kitchen is but you've got this strange kind of angles going on something about having that as uh the dining area and then putting the kitchens uh units down this wall get rid of that radiator move that and also down uh, that wall so um, obviously you have to put a board uh, in front of the window here to raise it up to the height 
uh, of the um, work surface, uh, but I think that's not an issue. Um, so you've got work surfaces down there, you've got work surfaces uh, down there, and then this area here uh, becomes a nice sort of living area, which I think will work really well. Ceiling is all over the place, so we're probably going to take that down. That means the electrician's got easy access to the rest of the property, uh, which I think is good news, because he can do his stuff and put all his cables in. Everywhere I want LED downlighters. So downlighters in here, downlighters uh, basically everywhere. It just really gives uh, the property a good feeling of, um, yeah, just mod modernity. Let's have a quick look out the back here. Uh, you can see it's in a bit of a state. Um, just a utilitarian little area. Uh, but a few problems up there. Uh, you can see uh, the wall, various places, the stuff coming off. Um, so while I'm doing it, I'll probably strip that back. So yeah, you can see, uh, it's not only exactly a brilliant space, but you can have a little barbecue out here. If it was all tidied up, uh, it'd be quite pleasant. A um, few things going on with the wall here. This really, um, this property is, is by the, uh, the coast and uh, this kind of stuff going on here, I think is partly due to the salt in the air and uh, you just need to strip that back and sort it out. Okay, so that's the kitchen. We've explored that. Luckily, the electrics, these are the sort of things I'm looking at, which are in here, are not in bad condition. Um, so not exactly brand new, but the fact we've got these relatively modern um, kind of throw switches uh, and uh, an ECB uh, electrical circuit breaker at the end there means that it's not hideously old. Uh, and obviously something at some points put uh, an extra unit on there. I don't know what that's for. That's obviously for something else. It's got a big breaker on there. That's probably an extra power supply for something like the boiler or whatever. So that's relatively good news. But sometimes um, a bit of a false economy. And it's an odd thing, but you know the electrics might be all right. But if you ask an electrician into a property and just say to them, just can you just patch this up and, and add me a few bits and pieces here? You know, I'm thinking about putting on suites in every bedroom uh, and they're going to have an electric shower. So that's going to require a, a higher uh, amperage supply. And they're adding that in. I want them to do the electric down, the, um, the down lighters. By the time you've done all that, they may well turn around and say, you know what, the house is empty. For me to completely rewire it, you know it's right then, it's going to cost you, I don't know, for this house, for four or five grand. If you're going to ask me to patch it up, it's going to be three, three and a half. I might think for another 1,500 quid, uh, maybe it's worth uh, just going the whole hog uh, and having the whole house rewired. Anyway, I'll take some, um, uh, some advice on that in terms of costings. Let's go upstairs. So this is where we're going to make a huge difference because uh, this is the rear, one of the rear bedrooms. Uh, previously, I talked about the number of facilities you have to provide. This is one of the bathrooms, um, and because of the number of people in the house, there had to be another bathroom. This is the other bathroom, and they're both not in bad, con well, no, they're both in terrible condition, let's be honest. So the plan is, because this bedroom is absolutely tiny, um, and a few problems with damp in the corner there. Okay, so this bedroom is tiny. So what I'm thinking about is if we take out that stud partition wall and take away those bathrooms, uh, keep one bathroom facility in here, but just redo it completely anyway, losing the communal bathrooms, but we don't need the communal bathrooms anymore uh, because we're obviously going to have en suites in every room. So you don't need that. So that then enables me to take out that wall there, increase the size of this room so it's actually a lettable sized room. Uh, and also just make uh, this whole thing better. So basically, those two things will go, that will go, this will all be knocked out. There'll be an ensuite in place of that, uh, and that bedroom will be a really nice room. Nice little supply. Now I've noticed this, a bit of a crack thing going on, up the wall there. Am I worried about that? Well, that's solid doesn't feel so solid so there's obviously a change between a solid wall and a not like a more like a stud partition wall there uh, so I think that crack is actually just where the join is it's not to my mind something to worry about but I quite like this little hall area uh, this little landing area 
It's really light, it's, it's quite airy, it's got the high ceilings, typical Victorian property. I mean, these were crate houses. I mean, in their day, this would have been owned by, you know, a fairly well-to-do person and, uh, and a jolly nice family home. It would be, and you know, I need to make a few a quick decisions. You know, I could just turn it back into a family home, but I think from an investment point of view, having it as an HMO, a house of multiple occupation, is the way I'm going to get uh, a real good return on my money in, in this particular place. And also provide a nice place for, you know, maybe five um, couples, five individuals, uh, a nice place for them to live. So I think that course of action is, uh, to my mind, the way to go. So a nice little area here. Uh, then you've got a bedroom, three bedrooms up here. So a sizable property. Uh, this is the first bedroom. And this is where it gets a bit weird because this has actually been made basically from this, this room here, which would have stretched all the way across uh, originally. And they basically put in this stood partition wall, <coughs> all these strange angles uh, are going on. So I'm thinking about taking out that stood partition wall there and having this as just one room. Because to my mind, yes, I'm gonna potentially lose a room. Uh, well, I will lose a room, but actually I end up with five really nice rooms um, as opposed to six okay rooms. Uh, I think the sacrifice uh, in terms of the number of rooms is, as far as I'm concerned, definitely, uh, definitely worth doing. So the plan here uh, would be to have this room here um, basically uh, take out the stud partition. Another stud partition is going to go there. I haven't been in that room yet. Uh, but basically take out that stud partition there um, and have the entrance to this room here. Uh, and then this room in here, we lose this stud partition there. And then when I talk about stud partition, I'm talking about a, a basically a stud work, which is um, bits of wood with plasterboard on the top of it. It's very easy to remove and it's not structural, so you can get rid of it uh, really, really easy. Because the thing you don't want to do is take out a wall, which is structural. You do that and the house falls down. Not good. Um, so, yeah, so you generate a lot of extra space in this room uh, by getting rid of those stud partitions. Bits of radiator to move around, but that's just part and parcel of what we're going to have to do. Um, and uh, that uh, pretty much uh, is that. So, um, so all in all, a very interesting project, very different to the other project uh, which I've embarked on. Um, this one, um, different mindset. I'm not turning it into a family home. I'm turning it into uh, an HMO. Um, the, the check out the regulations on that. Check out what you need to do, what you do what you can and can't put in, uh, what you definitely need to put in. Um, think about what people want these days from a place to live from that point of view. Do I furnish it? Uh, do I not? Um, do I go for six rooms over five? I'm gonna go for five. I think we've already decided that. You know, the level of finish. Well, I, said, I want it to be good. I want it to be an attractive place to live because uh, that is A, a nice place for people to live then and B, you know, the rents you're going to get are going to be slightly higher. So that definitely works in my favour. So, yeah, lots of decisions to take. A very exciting project. And uh, we're here at the start. I'm sure that in a few weeks we'll be back uh, to see how we're getting on.